Loyal listeners, we are back. Our beloved podcast, Beyond the Gym Floor, was derailed last spring due to just a very mild global pandemic, JK. Now we are resuming our conversations with area physical educators through Zoom. Um, I'm currently sitting in my closet right now. And if I'm being totally honest, I don't even like saying the word Zoom anymore. And we are only one week into the fall term. This does not bode well for my mental well-being in the slightest. So with that said, um, Eric Palafis of Carrie Busey Elementary School, thank you for joining me on Beyond the Gym Floor. Thank you for having me. No problem. Um, Eric, let's do this. Uh, so tell me a little bit about yourself. Where did you grow up? Yeah, so I'm uh, from Champaign originally. Uh, so I went to Botton Field, which is one of the Unit 4 schools until third grade. And then I moved over to St. Joe, St. Joseph, which is about 15 minutes east of Champaign. And I finished the rest of my school years there until I went to Eastern Illinois, got a bachelor's in education, kinesiology, and made my way back over here to the Unit 4 School District, where I've been ever since. So what led you to physical education specifically when you were at Eastern? Uh, to be honest with you, I think I knew that I wanted to be a physical education teacher before I even made it to Eastern. Um, it started for me in eighth grade. I had a coach, a track and cross country coach at St. Joe um, by the name of John McDonald, who goes by McD, that taught there forever. It was just a great person. He always helped me when I needed things. Um, and I just knew that I wanted to make an impact on kids' lives like he had been doing for so many years. So I knew going even into high school that that's what I wanted to do. Um, and then going into college, it was straight into it. I was ready to roll and really never looked back once I knew that's what I wanted. So, Wow. Not many 13 year olds can say they want, they know exactly what they want to do with their lives. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, it was just a mixture of that and always wanted to be around sports, playing sports in high school and just and enjoying that environment, just loving all of that because I'm a coach as well, but being able to see kids um, improve and just see them on and off, in and out of school all the time just has really been a pleasure for me. So, you know, I mentioned at the start of this that obviously we're still um, in kind of a weird situation with COVID-19. So I know that for Unit 4, you all are teaching remotely for the first quarter. What is one online strategy that you've used um, that you can already tell is successful or that you're excited to try in upcoming weeks? All right, yeah. So what we've been doing at Carrie Busey specifically, um, the first thing I want to say is shout out to the PE Twitter community because I get so many ideas from them. Um, one which was using Google Slides uh, to make interactive classrooms. So we've actually been able to take pictures and videos of ourselves and turn them into little GIFs. Um, so the students are seeing us um, and these are interactive GIFs where they can click on these things where it takes them to a website about nutrition or a video about a workout we were gonna do for the day. And it just make, gives it a little more of a a homey feeling or a feeling like they're actually in school again. Um, so I've been, we've been using the Bitmojis as well, but that virtual classroom is how we've started off this first week um, in PE. We just dive into that classroom. So the kids, it seems like they're literally there. Um, and then we go into the activity for the day. One thing that I haven't tried yet that I've talked to other P, uh, PE teachers about is Flipgrid. Um, which you students mm -hmm. are able to post videos of themselves exercising. Um, and that's one thing that I would like to try in the near future, um, probably with my fifth grade students. That seems to be a, a really good tool for PE teachers right now who are working remotely. Thank you. What's the most important lesson your students have taught you over the years? Uh, so I am going to learn a lot more because this is just the start of year four for me. Um, but I would definitely say the one thing that they've taught me is that there's always something going on um, in the background, like in people's lives and to be understanding. Um, sometimes my student who might be my best student nine out of 10 days is having a bad day and there's, something's going on and I need to be understanding that there's things going on in their life that could affect them because I know I have days where I come to school and I sure don't feel like I want to teach for that day. Um, 
and I might not be on my A game and my students have always been there to support me and have been there for me. So really just always being understanding of students or just people in general that there's things going on um, that you don't know about that um, could be affecting them just to treat people kindly and see what's going on with them before um, you get upset or make decisions without talking to them. So you've just alluded to just even having an understanding that they are living a life outside of your gymnasium. Um, do you have any other strategies where you try to reach your students in a way, like where you, where you let them know that you're there for them? Yeah, absolutely. It's just every possible time you have to interact with the kids and ask them questions, get to know things about them do it. That's, that's the most important thing. Once the kids trust you, they want to work for you. They want to do things for you. So that's, and I've slowly been learning that at first I felt when I first started, I had to have strict management, be an extreme control. And the more I've learned to just get to know my students, like I almost feel like I know I'm K through five. I almost feel like I'm on a friend level with my students, but it's a respectful level where they know when it's time to work, when it's time to play, because we spend so much time talking about any and everything that they're just comfortable with me, I'm comfortable with them. So any just reach out every time you can to talk oh. to a student about whatever it is for that day. Absolutely. And what, the one thing that immediately comes to mind for me is just how this current situation is just changing that dynamic. You know, I, I mean, so many elementary students, especially look forward to physical education so much that this has to be a crushing blow to them. I mean, many of them lean on their physical educators for emotional support. And how are we going to maintain that during this time? Yeah, that's, that's been And I'm tough. not expecting you to have an answer. I mean, this is tough. No, I mean, it, it is tough. Like we have the Google right now through Google Classroom before I, I did turn, muted it because students were commenting 200 times a day. Uh, but before I had to do that, uh, make that decision, I, I was getting lots of comments like, Mr. P, I did this today. I did that um, today, like telling me I made a video of how to do the pacer test inside. Um, and I had someone say, Mr. P, I got a score of 119. I know that was close to your score. Like they just want to share things with us. Um, so that makes things difficult. I know th through the Zoom meetings I've been doing, I've been doing exercises and workouts in the last five minutes. I just talk to them. I say, I want to hear your voices today. So just tell me anything that's going I on. I love that. I love that. You're trying, you're trying to keep that human connection there. Yeah. Um, do you have, and I know you're only in year four, but do you have a teaching highlight or one teaching highlight that comes to mind? Uh, yeah, it's just, uh, last year, actually. So one of my favorite units is our jump rope unit. And it's our kids' favorite units as well as what I've seen. And um, not all of my kids have the resources at home, but I had one student who came up to me during this unit and showed me a jump rope he made out of shoelaces so he could practice to be better in class because we had some system where they were trying to level up on consecutive jumps um, so they could join a club where they got to sign their name and said, Mr. P, I made this jump rope at home with shoelaces so I could practice. And so that, Kind of touched me showing that wow that's commitment <laughs> going on and it, yeah and it, i love that i love that and you know it just shows that you really actually don't need a lot of money to to be active and the fact that he valued your class enough to make that happen is just showing that you're you're making an impact in your jobs that's that's awesome um eric as a champagne urbana hometown legend your students and the fans of this podcast and there are thousands as I've indicated in the past uh, they need to know so what do you listen to in the car when you're driving I'm a music guy I listen to music all the time from the moment I wake up to the moment I go to bed I feel like I'm listening to music and that is I listen to all sorts of music anything from country rock hip-hop uh, pop anything I'm listening to anything and everything because I like dance and I like good vibes and so as soon as I get in the car, I'm turning on whatever song is the vibe I'm feeling right there. And we just roll with it. Try to try to make something positive. 
My uh, 22 month old was really rocking out this morning to Lady Gaga. I, I mean, I wish I had video evidence of this, but I mean, that was, he was feeling Lady Gaga this morning. Um, yeah. Favorite snack? Uh, favorite snack is probably guac and chips. I'm a big guac guy. <laughs> I probably eat guac or avocados like five to six days a week. I, I am allergic to avocado, which is like the worst allergy to have in the world. And I, boy, I have found that out the hard way because every once in a while it will accidentally be on something that I've ordered and I won't notice it right away. Ooh, it's terrible. Um, what do you, let's see here. Favorite toy as a kid. Favorite toys, maybe like a ball. I was an outside, just go play in the dirt, like just hang, hanging outside with my friends. So I don't know, maybe a soccer ball, basketball, football, just something in that sense, but nothing. I, I can't remember any toy specifically. It was just go out hanging out with my friends was what I like to do. Whatever was out there was what going to entertain us for the day. First concert. My first concert was a Kendrick Lamar and Mac Miller concert. Wow, um, that's pretty cool. Usually people's responses to this are something embarrassing, but that's actually quite cool. Yeah, it was actually really neat. It was my first uh, time in going to a amphitheater as well. So it was outdoor um, at the Eclipse Music Center, I think is what it's called in Indiana. So it was really cool. Got to be up in the outdoor seating part, listening to some music. And it was definitely a good concert for my first one. Wow. How, what, was it amazing? Oh, it was absolutely, it was amazing. I had never been to one before and it, it, it was awesome. Mac Miller was in high school at the time. He, um, and I remember I was in high school and he was saying, who's not going to school tonight? And I go, <laughs> I am, or tomorrow. So, That's oh, great. Yeah, that must be nice. <laughs> must be nice. So finally, when you settle down in the evening, what TV show do you look forward to watching? And there are definitely wrong answers here, Eric, so be careful. Uh, definitely, I have a TV, but I don't have any TV stuff going on on it. So if I were to watch anything, it would be sports. I like football, in, in, any NBA game, I'm big in the NBA, um, but not, not really a TV show guy. Oh, and that was the wrong answer. I'm so sorry. You have failed this podcast. Uh, I, I feel like I recently I got a uh, puppy. So my TV show has been what what piece of furniture has been chewed up for the day when I come home. So that's that's my entertainment in the evenings. Oh my gosh. What kind of puppy did you get? Uh, it's a Doberman Pinscher. So he's a working breed, lot, lots of energy and needs to be exercised every day. And he reminds me of that. If I don't get him that exercise, we have some behavior issues, which is ah, pretty similar been... to our students. It's great to get them exercise. So. Oh yeah. I've been down the puppy road before. I know that exercise is key to their, <laughs> to their behavior. Um, well, Eric, thank you for being a guest on Beyond the Gym Floor. Take care. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for being a guest on Beyond the Gym Floor. And if you would like to be a guest or simply have a comment or a question, you can reach me, Jamie O'Connor, at beyondthegymfloor at gmail.com. Encourage your friends to listen and subscribe to the show either through iTunes, iHeartRadio, or Spotify. Thanks for listening, folks.